11. Grant Robertson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Justice. What was the name of the Chinese official that she dined with during her ministerial visit to China in October 2013? And if she will not name him, why did she give details of his seniority and place of work? Honourable Judith Collins. Mr Speaker, I assume the member is referring to the private dinner in Beijing on Sunday 20 October 2013. I have stated publicly that I attended the private dinner and have disclosed the other attendees at that dinner. It is not appropriate to disclose the name of a person who was a friend of Mr Xi. He was attending a private dinner and is entitled to protection of his privacy. Even though it was a private dinner, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff said it would be appropriate to advise that the person in their working life was a senior government official with a Chinese border control agency. Order, Mr. Speaker. Order. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, I, I'm seeking your guidance whether under Standing Order 383 the Minister is telling the House that it is not in the public interest for her to tell us the name of the official, because no, she, she's refused to answer that part of the question. No, I didn't hear invoking that. I just heard her say it was not appropriate. Supplementary question? Point of order, Honourable David. I, I would refer uh, the um, Speaker to Speaker's ruling 1741, Ministers have a responsibility to the House and through the House to the country to account for the public offices they hold. Question time is an important element of this accountability. Ministers should therefore take questions seriously and endeavour to give informative replies to the questions that are asked. Mr Speaker, I would suggest that unless there is some ground which I would not understand that a public interest can be claimed in pursuit of not uh, answering the question, then the Minister has a duty to this House to answer it. Oh, order. Does the member wish to, uh, the point order. Cause, which to speak Mr. to the point of order? Speaker, uh, strictly speaking, this matter is not a matter for the House. It was not a ministerial meeting. It was not at the funding of the taxpayer. It was a private dinner, and I have answered the question appropriately. Order. 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 The question was clearly accepted as an order, and the minister. I listened very carefully to the order, to the question, uh, to the answer. And in my opinion, she's aggressive. Uh, she didn't invoke the use of the words "public." Uh, it's not in the public interest. She just said it's not appropriate. Members can make their conclusion. I, I can't accept the argument that the question has not been addressed satisfactorily. Uh, member has further supplementaries. That's the way the member must make progress. Question. Point of order, right honourable. Mr. Speaker, you have accepted the, prior, the minister's. Uh, answer, which was, and it's her judgment, but it's yours really, uh, that it wasn't appropriate. However, when you've got ambassadorial staff there, like the ambassador to China there at this meeting, order, me, the members I'm raising a point make, of order and keep quiet. And the member is, well, order. Yes. Well, the member's raising a point of order, but at this stage I can't actually accept it as a point of order. The want, member wants to clarify, it'd be very great. Well, I'm trying to clarify it by saying the attention of taxpayers, the attendance of taxpayers' money and the attendance of, minister, of ambassadorial staff means that that trip in all respects is one in which she should answer questions on. Oh, no. The, the Minister gave a far more lengthy answer than just saying it's not appropriate. She gave an explanation as to the dinner, etc. It was quite a lengthy answer. She then said as to the name of the person, the seniority, etc. I don't think it's appropriate to know. That's a satisfactory answer. Um, it, it is now over to the House, if it wants further information, to, it, uh, to elucidate that with supplementary. Supplementary question. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I invite you, uh, again, when you look at your tapers, you indicate that you do do, to note the fact that the Minister said it was a private dinner, but that she has also said that taxpayer-funded staff were in attendance. It can't be both. If we are paying for her ministerial office order, staff order, to attend... Order, the it, member will resume his seat. He's asked me to have a look at the transcript, and I will do so. Further supplementaries, Grant Robertson. Mr. Speaker, with reference to the Minister's answer, if this was a private dinner, why did she invite New Zealanders' ambassador to China to the dinner? Honourable Judith Because, Collins. Mr Speaker, for a start, I believe that that is the polite thing to do, and secondly, it is... What is I know that might be something strange to Labour Party to be polite to staff, 
but actually I invited the ambassador and his wife because I thought that was the right thing to do. It was polite and also there was no, no reason not to at least let them know that it was occurring. A supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Why did the ambassador decline her invitation? Honourable Judith Mr. Collins. Mr Speaker, that's a question for the ambassador. <laughs> supplementary question, supplementary Mr Speaker. question, Grant Robertson. Was the official from the Chinese Department of Agriculture? Honourable Mr. Judith Mr Speaker, Collins. I'm not able to provide that information. <laughs> Point of order, Honourable David Parker. There is considerable public interest in this issue, which goes to the probity of government. Which goes to order, the this is a point of order. Which goes to the probity of government. The standing, uh, the speaker's uh, reference that I gave you, 1741, shows that ministers have a duty to this House to answer questions so that the House can hold ministers to account. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Henare might not think order corruption is inappropriate, but we have an obligation on this side of the House to hold ministers to account. We cannot do that if ministers are allowed not to answer questions other than on the grounds of some national interest that supersedes their duty to this House. Uh, I, on this occasion, I don't, I, the moment I'm raising a valid point of order, I don't agree with them. The minister has answered it to, uh, by saying, I, I cannot answer that. That's ex well, well, I've forgotten the words, it's so long ago. But she effectively said she won't answer that. She won't name whether it's from that particular... That is the Minister answering the question. Further... Point of order. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, what the Minister said in her answer was that she was unable to answer it. Unable to answer, the que answer that question. That cannot be true because she has said that the person was from a border control agency. She clearly knows the answer to the question. How is it acceptable for her to stand up in this House and say, I am unable to answer that question? That cannot be a, an addressing of a question when we know that she knows the name of the agency. But, but the member needs to think about the question he asked. And um, it's now so long ago, I've but it was about, was he from the Minister, Ministry of Agriculture? And the member, a minister said, I can't answer that. that. I'll have some help from the right honourable Winston. Mr. Speaker, it's your members' day. You're wasting every time, you? every minister that's ever been abroad here will know that when you go to meetings, particularly in China, that the full list of guests is laid out before you, particularly because the language is different from the English language, and both those titles and names would have been given. This minister knows full well that. That information was available to her, so why won't you give it over now? Because if the member would only listen to the questions earlier, the member, minister rose and said it's not appropriate to do so. That is the answer the minister's given. Now, we're getting to the stage. Order. I am not prepared to entertain this waste of time any longer. If the member has a further supplementary, I'll accept it. True question, Mr Speaker. Why is it not appropriate for her to name the official that she had dinner with on a ministerial trip? Honourable Judith Collins. Mr Speaker, it was a private dinner and the person is entitled to their privacy. Sub order. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. How does she think it is acceptable to taxpayers who paid $30,000 for her and her staff member to go to China to not give the name of an official from a border control agency when she was at a dinner with the directors of a company that her husband is a fellow director of. Why shouldn't taxpayers have some honesty from the Minister for once? Order. Speaker. Order. Honourable Judith Collins. Mr Speaker, that question is quite incorrect. In fact, there was a private dinner and as that member might one day find out, even ministers are allowed to have private dinners with friends. Point of order, Honourable David Parker. Speaker's ruling 1725 says an answer to a question ought to be given if it can be given consistently with the public interest. You have already ruled that the Minister has not claimed that it is not in the public interest. She has claimed that it is not in her private order. interest. Would the member resume his seat? Immediately. Thank you. I never ruled the Minister claimed that. I said he did not use, she did not use those words. Now, this particular question has been asked and it has been answered 
perfectly satisfactory to me. I'll accept it's not to the opposition, but we are moving on. No, just point of order will be heard and signed. But before I hear it, I want to make absolutely sure that the member's not in any way relitigating a decision I've just I'm made. trying to clarify your Order! Point. Member will resume his seat. Member will resume his seat. I'm on my feet. I'm on my feet. I'd prefer not to have to yell. But when I rise to my feet, regardless of who the member is, that member then sits down. Now, order. I just want to clarify, if the member is going to continue to relitigate a decision I've made, that will lead to disorder, and I will treat that very seriously. If the member wishes to raise a fresh point of order, I will certainly hear it. Honourable David Parker. P point of order, Mr Speaker. Is it I, a fresh I, point of order? It is, Mr Speaker. It is. Honourable I'm endeavouring to clarify if your ruling was, and I may have misunderstood it, but is your ruling that the Minister claimed that there was a public interest that prevented her from answering the first question? The member, uh, it was quite some time ago, the Minister rose to her feet and said it's not appropriate. Words to that effect. She did not use the words, it is not in the public interest. That's the point I'm trying to make to the member. She gave the order. Furthermore, when I'm on my feet, I don't want interjections from any member. She answered that it was not appropriate. That is the answer she's given. I invited the member, if he wanted to make further progress, to ask further supplementaries, and he's done so. That's the way to do it. But not to relitigate the answer that already has been given that I have said has addressed the question. Point of order, Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'd, I'd like to make two points of order. The, the, first, the first point I'd like to make is whether you are in fact making a new Speaker's ruling that a Minister can decline to answer a question because it is in her private interest. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that a member, a minister's asked a question, the minister then rises and answers. And in this particular case, the minister rose and answered the question, and I considered that that answer addressed the question. Now, the second point of order? The second point of order goes to when you look at the tapes, Mr Speaker. Can you please look at the tone, the laughing support of the Prime Minister from the chair and the tone used to the deputy leader of the Labour Party. Sir, it is not an indication of a lack of bias. I will order. Order, I will have a look at the tapes on this occasion, but I, I say to all members again, when I rise to my feet to maintain order in this House, it is absolutely essential that members then resume their seat regardless of whether that's the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition or the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. I want to make that clear to all members. Point of order, right Honourable Winston. Yeah, I seek a point of clarification. It's this. You see, the question came by way of supplementary and you allowed the question to be put. And then the Minister's response was that in answering the question wasn't appropriate. Now, is it to be that henceforth uh, the minister or minister may decide the appropriateness of a question, or you? No. I decide the appropriateness of a question. The minister then has the discretion to answer. I'm just repeating the text or the answer that the minister then gave, and I ruled that that addressed the question. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, um, when you're reflecting on this, can I, can I ask you to reflect on this? The answer to my supplementary question asking whether the official was from a particular department, the Minister answered, I am unable to answer that question. In her primary answer, she made clear that she did know the agency the person was from. I would ask that you reflect on whether that is an acceptable answer for a Minister to give, consistent order, with the Speaker's order. rulings, the that Mr Park... I've already said I will reconsider. Question number 12. Come Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question.